Being ignored and disregarded by the people who mean the world to us is truly heartbreaking. This is exactly where my relationship with my family stands right now. I have known Ava since I was eight, and we've been married for 15 years with three daughters. Despite this, my role in the family is far from what a father or husband typically receives. I get no respect, acknowledgement, or say in any decisions. They treat me as if I am not part of their family. I am literally nothing more than a taxi and ATM service for them. My wife shows no affection to me, even in words, and when I try to express how much I care for them, they always ignore me and disregard my efforts. I am not an expressive person, so I keep my feelings to myself, never revealing how much it hurts. When it comes to celebrating their special days, I always throw parties and give expensive gifts for birthdays, Mother's Day, and other important occasions, receiving only a tiny bit of appreciation in return. I had endured it all patiently. But what happened this week truly broke my heart. It was Father's Day, and I woke up hoping for some love and attention. Instead, I found an empty house with no note, no wish, nothing at all. When I texted Ava to ask where they were, she replied that they were at a spa and I should not wait for them on lunch. The entire day passed, and they returned at night. When I asked to have dinner together, they refused, mentioning they had already eaten at a restaurant I loved. There was no mention of Father's Day. They didn't even ask how I was. Later that same week, it was my birthday, and their attitude was no different. No one wished me, and when I suggested doing something special like watching a movie or cooking something different, they disagreed, saying they were too busy, though they did nothing instead of web surfing all day. The next day, when I was lying down to rest, Ava suddenly remembered it was my birthday the other day and asked if there was something I was expecting. I refused, stating that I no longer expected anything from them, making her confused. To explain what I had been through, I started asking questions to help her realize how she had been treating me for the last year, and she had no answers to justify her behavior. In the end, she remarked that I was being unfair by bringing it up. Getting emotional at that, I raised my voice, asking how it was unfair to expect a little affection from my family in return for all that I had been doing for them. When I mentioned Father's Day, she realized they had also forgotten that and felt somewhat guilty. I told her that I was a human, not a punching bag, and I felt everything. Ava seemed confused by my sudden outburst, and when I recounted instances of being ignored, she made excuses like, we were not aware of how serious you were about that. At this point, I got up, stating that they no longer needed to pretend I was invisible if they did not want me in their lives, and left the house around midnight. It is already the next day, and I am still not home. I am very confused at the moment. I love all of them and would never want to leave them, but I am uncertain about their affection towards me. They seem to be happier if I am not in their lives since they already ignore my existence. Although I know I am not to blame, if they truly see me as the problem, I guess I should solve it by disappearing from their lives. I have tried my best to be a great husband and father, never ignoring their needs and always prioritizing them over work. However, I no longer have the energy to act as a machine for them. No matter what I did, it was never enough, and that has made me tired. Since I left the house, I only received one text from Ava, saying they were sorry for making me feel that way, that I truly matter to them, and asking me to come home and talk whenever I felt like it. Although all three of my daughters have their own phones, none of them asked about my whereabouts, which makes me think they never wanted me in their lives at all. They surely heard my voice when I raised it and knew when I left the house, but they did not care or bother to ask what was going on. Compared to my mental state last night, I am feeling much better now and have decided to talk to some people and seek their advice regarding what I should do. Update 1. I am mentally much more stable than before and have been able to get resources for therapy and legal counsel through my office. My seniors have been a big support during this hard time and have arranged sessions to help me get out of this situation. The doctor I consulted suggested that I take sessions for spousal therapy. I also contacted a few divorce lawyers to learn about the procedure and found that it would be expensive costing almost 70% of my savings. However, if the case is filed with an accusation against Ava, such as cheating, it would not be as burdensome for me. A few days after I left the house, my daughters contacted me, worried about my well-being and asking where I was. I told them I loved and missed them, but needed some alone time to think through certain things. It was the first time in their lives that I was absent from some school events, which made them feel the difference. My absence also caused our extended family and social circle to contact them and ask about it. My daughters told me how they felt about my absence and how Ava was struggling because of it. Ava also tried to contact me to check on my well-being, apologize, and inform me about what was happening at the house. She also asked about my plans for the 4th of July, the day we hold a party and BBQ night every year, but I told her I was not interested in joining them. However, I did mention that she and I needed to talk about certain things and sort them out. She planned to surprise me with a birthday party on the 4th of July as compensation for forgetting it, but I refused to go and spoiled it. On the weekend after the 4th, I went to meet her at the designated location and saw she had brought all three of our daughters along. I had missed them a lot and was happy to see them. They also seemed to have missed me since they were as happy as I was. However, since I needed to discuss things alone, I mentioned that to Ava. She replied that she brought the children because they missed me and it was okay to talk in their presence, something which seemed a little manipulative to me. 
Using this as an example, I told her that was how they had always ignored my wants and never gave importance to my opinions. Ava apologized again, but I refused to accept those, remarking that they felt forced and her actions suggested the contrary. I also blamed her for setting the wrong example for our children, and that is what they will follow in the future when treating me. That hit her hard, and she seemed really regretful even for bringing them along. At this point, two of my daughters went away to buy some snacks, while the eldest one stayed. Getting straight to the point, I asked if there was someone else that she liked, but Ava became shocked and denied it right away, stating that she would never do that. As the conversation continued, my eldest daughter also left us alone. After discussing a few more things for about 20 minutes, I placed two folders on the table, one with separation documents and the other with therapist referrals. I asked her to make a choice, asserting how serious I was about it, and to tell me her decision as soon as she could. I made it clear that if she chose to be by my side, there would be some major changes in our way of life and relationship. She was no longer the person I liked, married, and spent my life with, and that was something I had told myself. After some time, our daughters came back and Ava got up to leave with them. Learning that I was not coming back with them, the youngest one became frustrated, yet I refused, and they eventually had to leave alone. After considering the options I had given her, Ava called me the next day to tell me she chose therapies over separation and had already scheduled appointments for both of us. I told her I would not show up until she completed her bi-weekly sessions and worked on herself alone. I have been treating her the way most people and my therapist recommended, and it is going fine. That is the current situation. Even though the process is still midway, I already feel much better than before. I have made a few changes in my life and how I treat my family, which seem to be better than before. I no longer make one-sided efforts and only reciprocate what they give me. It has been a week since I returned home and I have maintained my boundaries with them. I have a separate room for myself and have set rules that no one is allowed to break. My attitude will remain the same for an indefinite period, but I hope our lives change the way I want as time passes. Ava does make efforts to improve our relationship, but I am not ready for that at the moment. I have clarified to her that there is a lot we need to work on and make up for before we can move forward. Expecting love and affection in response to giving those is natural, yet not everyone is lucky enough to have grateful people around who acknowledge their efforts and return them twofold. When someone makes you feel worthless, take a step back and make them realize what they lost. When they stop receiving your unconditional care and affection, they will learn the importance of having someone like you in their lives. Prioritizing your needs over the wants of others doesn't make you selfish. Instead, it is crucial for your self-worth and is always the right thing to do when people start taking you for granted.